Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Raw Recap on the Pro Wrestling Sheet. Hey, Ryan Satin could not join me, the host, John Roca, today because he's got some things he's handling, got some business he's working on. Luckily, the Urban Gladiator was around fresh off his return to the ring that happened yeah. over the weekend yeah. to come on to the show. Jay Washington, how are you, brother? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm yeah. glad to be back. Uh, got wish... any bruises? Got any bumps? What's going on? Nah, I just, I don't have any bruises or bumps. I just, I feel normal. I feel good the way I've been. <laughs> feeling i mean there's nothing everybody's like oh you're gonna be in so much pain are you gonna yeah, be hurting yeah. nah i'm good i got out the ring i just was like all right take this tape off <laughs> you know it was just a little bit of sweat from you know working but it was it was good being back in the ring the ring was comfortable yeah which was a big thing you know that's it's always my concern like training in one ring is one thing but you're like what is the ring i'm gonna be working in yeah and it was i took a bump and i was like okay i can do this yeah i can take these bumps and then the guy i worked tony Reyes was a good dude uh Good brother. He's been in the business for a while. Mm -hmm. So it was good to do that. Shout out to UEW for having me out. And I'll be back out with them uh, August 14th, I believe it is. Okay. August 10th or 14th. I'll have the information. In Long Beach again? And this one will be in Long Beach again. The okay. same spot. Um, but then I got a couple other dates with them. So it's it's kind of, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's fun. And hopefully now some other doors with some other companies are about to start opening up. Yeah. So, yeah, being back in the wrestling ring, in a sense, full time on top of everything else i feel like an idiot for doing <laughs> why I swear, you gotta have fun in life i know i do here's the thing uh -huh. i do stand-up comedy sure, regularly sure. everyone knows i'm an actor i audition i book stuff regularly i am a podcaster which i have two of them i am an internet host i'm here in every other place mm -hmm. right i am a father which is first and foremost above all that i do a lot of illustrations and now i'm back wrestling yeah yeah, fun. Everybody's like, well, what do you have time for yourself? I don't know what that means. So Driving from place to place. Uh, no, that's Ubering and catching the bus. Oh, hey. fair enough. <laughs> but All no, right. but seriously, I mean, I'm happy with it. I'm excited good. to be back in the ring. It was, it, it was a good feeling sitting in the back just lacing up my boots for a show. Yeah, I bet. You know, lacing up for training was one thing, but lacing up for a show knowing, all right, here we go. You know, that was a good thing, man. <laughs> so I'm happy great. to be back, and I'm happy to be here, man, to talk Monday Night Raw. Cause right on. I wish people would stop calling it the Heyman era when he hasn't officially taken over. Well, uh, it seems like he's officially took over from last week. Certainly, well, if people felt that way going into last week after the show. Of course you will because of what you saw, but right. also it's – Heyman doesn't take him nor Bischoff take hold for a couple of months. Mm. So what we're seeing, surprisingly, is Vince running the show like Heyman was running the show. Okay. Heyman may be giving suggestions, but right. this isn't his show yet. I think it's still going through. This is what we talked about last week with uh, Ryan. Yes, Heyman and Bischoff are in charge of the shows, but they're not in charge oh, no, of not the shows. Oh, no, of course not. Vince is still in charge of the shows. They're just like vice presidents in charge that, of those particular crazy, departments. Because it's like you bring these guys in yeah. because, A, you love what they, you respect what they've done. You know they know how to put shows together. Right. But at the same time, you show you just don't fully trust anybody. No matter what. Yeah. I mean, these are two guys who ran their own federations, in essence, with ECW and WCW, yeah. now underneath Vince. You know, there's no one else he trusts, maybe, to take these spots in these two guys. Yeah, Triple you, H is doing a bunch. He's doing great. He's doing NXT, NXT and other stuff as which well. Which is yeah. crazy. He and lets, Stephanie, too. He lets NXT be NXT. Yeah, right. He lets that be unless it's the guys coming up. Yeah. And it's certain ways because they're not coming up to stay up. They're just being protected and being, you know, publicized. Exactly. But Vince just has to... I get it. You have this old school mentality. This is how the company should be ran. This is what right. you need to do. And I respect that you've made this into a multi-billion dollar juggernaut. Mm -hmm. It is no one can argue this. But at the same time, you need to do something different. I understand you're putting on a television program that centers around wrestling. Yeah. But you need to have more wrestling and you need to fill in some places. Well, I figure, well, let's get into it because I Absolutely. think they did. I think they did have a lot of wrestling last night. No, I'm just saying night. that I, they did. Yeah, overall, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, certainly they're going down that path last night because right off the bat, not much intro, boom, we're into it. Becky Lynch coming out, Seth Rollins coming out, taking on Zelina and Andrade in a mixed tag team match. Elimination rules. Which means, uh, which means whoever gets eliminated, the match still keeps going until two people are eliminated you know that from means? that team. It means it's another two out of three falls match. Yeah, in essence, they, yeah. They found a way, and I tweeted about this. I said they found a way to make every single match two out of three falls mm. without directly calling them two out of three falls. Right, in a crafty way. In a crafty way. And again, it's that whole, once we heard about the whole he didn't want wrestling in between commercial breaks. Yeah. But it's like, do what SmackDown Live does. Have the pitcher in pitcher. 
Right. It, it, why, why do you just can't do that? Well, you got to fill three hours. And I, f- I think they figured, well, if we're going to drag it out, might as well drag it out, have the commercial breaks for the wrestlers to rest a little bit as well. It's not a negative. I mean, I it's, it's, but I hear I, my, the my issue issues. is not for the just the, I get for the guys and the mm-hmm. girls to rest. But the people in attendance, those in the seats in the, in the yeah, arena, yeah, yeah. you're sitting here and now you like, oh, you don't know exactly you went to a commercial break until you just see sitting, everybody sitting around. Right. Then all of a sudden you go ring the bell, you know, and stuff like that. And I just, those are the people who are, you know, griping and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I get what they're doing right. and I get the advertisements. I get all it. I get that's where your money comes from. Yeah. But you can keep the wrestling going. You okay. have it going on SmackDown. Yeah, well, they're trying but something they, new. But know? like you said, they came out the gate. Let's go for yeah, it. Yeah, and it was a good match. I thought a great back and forth. A lot of stuff. Selena is getting, is getting more and more shots in the ring, which I really appreciate. I like how mm-hmm. her, her game has changed. You know, a lot of people are critical of her. Uh, and some of the fellow wrestlers you hear behind the scenes kind of thought Selena was feeling herself a little bit. But seeing her uh, perform the way she has and grow and grow more and more. This woman gets it. And you see her, if you follow her on Instagram, you see the training she does with Aleister Black, her husband. Mm-hmm. It's pretty intense. So to see it come out in the ring, I think it's fantastic. She works hard for it and deserves and the uh, recognition. I've heard so much about Zelina from Dale Rutledge, from Johnny LaQuasto, from Scott Nard, from the guys I do. Um, John Quasto, you mean? John, excuse me. John Quasto, my... My apologies, sir. Didn't mean to mess up your name. Uh, from the guys I do rest, because she was always a part of the show. Yeah. She was a part of the show then and was very big with the guys, and she was always deep into the business. And people will see wrestlers get brought in as managers, valets, yeah. and things like that, and think that, oh, they can't do stuff in the ring. And no, that's just a character change the company is right, made. Right. So she got down last night. She showed what she can do, and you put her on a spot like Andrade's been there. Yeah, Andrade's been there. They, right, they've right. given him these spotlights yeah, yeah, in these yeah. moments. All three of them have been there, right? All three of them have been there. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Selena's three still getting three to out of spot. four yeah. have been there. This is her time to shine coming right out the gate on yeah. Raw with the top two stars on Raw, one of the top stars in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was good, good back and forth. You know, Zelina gets eliminated first. Becky gets into it with uh, Lacey, who is outside the ring. But uh, uh, Rollins has to come down and pull her off Lacey. Mm-hmm. That leads them getting back into the ring. Uh, Andrade and Rollins have great back and forth in the ring as well. Eventually, Rollins gets the victory. Uh, but then as they walk away, they get attacked by Corbin and Lacey from behind. So this is the way the whole match was set up and the way it was played out story-wise. Yes. You're you're seeing the groundwork here that Becky is the strong one. Becky is the emotional one. Not, I don't mean that in a negative way. The, she's the she's the in control. She wants to fight. Yeah. And, and Rollins is the one who has to pull her back, which is ironic because Rollins used to be that guy mm-hmm. who you have to had to yank back. So Becky playing that role kind of works in their relationship because one of two things is going to happen. Rollins is going to pull her off at the wrong moment, get the get some kind of situation where he gets uh, pinned through some kind of finisher or uh, Becky's going to get hit wrong and then get pinned and they're going to lose their titles. Yeah, they're losing their titles yeah, regardless. It feels very much so. And, and that's, you know, this is the send off show for this weekend's Extreme Rules, but it certainly feels like that could happen. Oh, yeah, they're definitely, I mean, I think the way they're setting this up, because once they started bringing the relationship into yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, they're going to find a way to use this relationship to be the reason they lose the titles, mm. then do the whole angle where their relationship splits on the show right. because of such. Yeah. But they'll still be in a relationship outside of it. So, the problem is now we'll have this romantic drama again. It's television. It's television. I get, I get it. But do we? Baron Corbin. Some people have wanted to see his Universal Champion. I, I, I have no, I have no issue with that. Yeah, I've, I've come around on him over the last few weeks and said like, I, I can see him having the belt. Right. People have stood behind it's Baron Corbin. Possible. Lacey Evans is the one. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Oh. I, I just don't feel. You don't think she's there yet? I don't think she's there yet. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. She's had stumbles. She's uh, like stumbling to the ring or mess spots or when she went heavy on Bailey with that Bailey to back suplex. Yeah. That, those are things that you're like, well, what's going on here? And well, let's clean that up before we give her a title because then you're validating some of the mistakes that she's made as a youth. Absolutely. And that's the that's the issue I have. A lot of people say, well, you're trying to say she's not good enough. Maybe she wasn't ready to be put into this spot right that's not saying you don't bring her up exactly that's not saying that at all plenty yeah. of guys on the other side have been handed the spot too early Way and have fumbled the ball too early so and you, it doesn't and you matter. see it yeah you see it all the time and i just think this lacey evans is so much in the forefront mm-hmm. with this and it was just like i get what you're trying to do you're making her a credible threat 
but I feel like her having the woman's right, which I get is supposed to be a knockout punch. It's a good it's supposed finisher. to be the the women's equivalent to the big up big shows KO punch. Right, right. Get it. But you have Becky Lynch who's been fighting everybody else. And now how many times do we have to keep doing this? Yeah. Because yeah, now you'll potentially have Lacey take the belt. Which means we're going to SummerSlam next month. Right. Where we have the rematch. Yeah. You know, and it's then after that, do we do the because, yeah, there's no automatic rematches. I know people are thinking that, mm-hmm. but we'll find a way to make it where Becky gets a rematch. Yeah. Then do we do this whole back and forth with them or what happens with Lacey Evans? It's just that I don't want her. You need, you build her up right. Then don't have her lose the belt to go fall into obscurity. because mm-hmm. We see that so many times. Yeah, I agree with you. This should last a little bit longer, but maybe for the storyline, they have to make it work this way. Uh, and maybe they lose here at Extreme Rules, Rollins and Becky, and then the rematch, like you said, is at SummerSlam, but maybe there's fights in between to kind of um, move away from the idea of it being an immediate rematch. Before we move on, I want to ask you a yeah. quick question. Do you think this whole Lacey Evans, because I've been thinking about this, and yeah. I, don't, I want to know what the people think. Do you all think that the Lacey Evans drag out is due to Sasha Banks not being there anymore? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I think a certain somebody is coming back this weekend. So I think that's yeah. been an issue. She's been, ra- listen, if you follow these people on social media, social media is the clue to everything, all right? Becky has been leaning into this relationship with Seth more so, more than ever in the last few weeks, mm-hmm. talking all that stuff, saying like, oh, nobody believed in us. They keep making fun of us, blah, blah, blah. This is going to go to a breakup. Of course. Uh, Sasha has started posting about how much she misses wrestling and loves wrestling. And in the end, she, she posted a video of when she was 17 years old, uh, having some kind of uh, uh, video you know, on black and white and talking about how, you know, she wants to be the, as good as the wrestler she's watching and better. Okay. So all of that is laying the groundwork to me that she is coming back real soon. If not this weekend, certainly SummerSlam. But there were hints in the Nikki Cross Bailey thing we'll get to later. That Please, I think yeah, because I might lay the hints. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, all right. So it, I love the groundwork. We got, we got all this going on. Uh, I, one move I will say before we move on that I really loved, uh, Selena, Zelina rather, trying that uh, Hurricane Rana Seth catching her and Becky doing that kick. Oh, yeah, that was a beautiful. was incredible. That was one thing I did appreciate that even though, like they said, Zelina had been eliminated. Yeah. She, they still played spots with all of them mm-hmm. and it kept it interesting. It didn't look like it was just Andrade by himself. Right. That was a beautiful thing. They worked that match perfectly and everybody, no matter the fact, no matter the fact that Becky and Seth went over, Andrade and Zelina look strong and great. Yep. Absolutely. Paul Heyman steps over the corpses of Rollins and Becky as he comes to the ring to deliver it. his promo. Uh, you know, and the fans go crazy. ECW chants immediately. But I'm just talking about the, the, the way when Heyman steps over Rollins yeah. and he looks at him and then Seth Rollins has to get that terrified look because he does. I mean, granted, we know that Heyman's just going to deliver a promo, but yeah. you selling the story of Oh shit, this is about to happen on me right now. It's an Iverson step over Tyrone Lou. That's oh, what that is. Oh, the most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes out, says that Lesnar is possible, is going to uh, uh, cash in his, his uh, Money in the Bank uh, case this weekend. Uh, he hasn't decided who he's going to cash in, but he's going to cash in. And he says, This is a spoiler. This is a spoiler. But he also not a says, prediction us. But he what? also says, I've built up my credibility to I could tell you the truth or could be telling you a lie. Yeah. You just have to watch and find out. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the that's the way you keep this interesting with him. Because mm-hmm. remember, when Brock got that briefcase, everybody's first face was like, Oh dear God, here we go. <laughs> because at first you like he submitted the title instantly. Right. Then he did this whole, I got a year to cash it in, and you're like, Oh no! It's but you great. keep it going. But it's a, I think it works now. Oh yeah, because now you, there's this looming threat of no matter what you do, whether you're Kofi Kingston or Seth Rollins, you can beat your opponent. Yeah, and you can just hear. And I would love for him to come in without hearing his music, though. Oh wow! I would love. That's for, that's a tough thing to do because you want the fans to get all crazy. About you think it. the fans wouldn't pop with Brock Lesnar running through the stands? Yeah, sure, it would pop. I agree, but I think the music is people wait for that music cue. You know, people love it. Yeah, when I, you hear that broken glass, it's not the same as when Austin. Comes oh, absolutely! Out on his own. I, I absolutely I agree. I will not disagree way. with you, and I, I agree wholeheartedly. People yeah. love the music. I just want Brock to do something different with this. It's fair. You know, do something different because if you got Seth Rollins look or have the music come out, have the music hit. Yeah, yeah. Have Seth looking at the entryway. That's possible. Then have Lesnar come out from the from crowd behind or something yeah. from the crowd. Yeah, I could see that. Or even Sweet. Kofi. Yeah. I wonder if he cash in. Can you use it to cash in for two titles? If he sets up a triple threat match. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's a possibility. Wouldn't no. that be something? Which I, thought, I thought he was going to do a super showdown. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I thought it was superstar showdown. I got trouble for that. It's, it's, it's whatever the other show is that's <laughs> bigger to or equivalent than WrestleMania. Supposedly. All right. <laughs> uh, next up, we have a two out of three falls matchup. This one was kind of, this was said it was a two. This, this was the rare one last night that was a two out of three falls matchup from the beginning. Usos and The Miz taking on the Revival and Elias. Elias gets eliminated almost immediately from this thing after only a few minutes. Uh, and then eventually the Usos get the victory over uh, the Revival revival here good victories for everyone good match overall i thought um but you know i, I don't know what do we do what do we uh, are we setting up usos versus the revival now down the road that's happening at extreme rules regardless right. oh, for that's the happening for the titles the problem i have with this whole match yeah, is the fact me. we've got miz thrown into obscurity again oh yeah yeah because he is his whole thing is i'm anti shane mcmahon when shane mcmahon's not paying attention to him yeah I want to get my hands on Shane. Shane's not paying attention to you. So you got to deal with Elias, who at one moment we build up, and now we're breaking back down, mm -hmm. who can be... Watch some of Elias' old matches in NXT. And watch some of the matches Elias has actually had when they took him seriously. Yeah, I the thought, man can go. I thought last week's match, he was incredible. He was incredible. Week, yeah. But it's like you keep putting him in these situations where it just... It, it doesn't do him any justice. Yep. So I... I this was just like, all right, we, we need to keep the Usos and the Revival together to show to pump this match mm -hmm, up, mm -hmm. but we got to throw an extra thing in there and make it a, make it a you know six man tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you bring that up with with uh, Shane and Miz. Certainly, when the Usos were coming down, the first thing they said to to Miz, "Oh, Miz, good to see you. Done with Shane. Now you're with us." And you're just like. Okay, he's not. Yeah, you miss can't. They're just use. They're just plug him in certain spots right now. He is a utility player. All around. And again, if 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 Mike is cool with that, yeah. If that's what, because at this point you've got to be a father again, a new dad again, right? A new dad again. You know, you got everything else. I can respect that if you just want to play your role real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but let's just do that. Don't do a storyline setup right. where it's like, wait, what? You you want to still get your hands on Shane? What what? <laughs> but Shane McMahon right now has Drew McIntyre being his his lackey yeah. almost. It, it's, just, it's just weird. Mm -hmm. That whole angle is weird to me. I yeah, don't know about were, how you or anybody else. No, is. no, it's not an angle we're a fan of here on the show. Okay. Certainly Ryan hates the angle. And last week we uh when it was the angle again, we were like, I thought we were done with this. Why is this coming back for God's sake? So <laughs> Uh, I guess it's just to fill up story time. Uh, we get to, and then we go backstage for the 24-7 promo here with Drake and his wife. Uh, what's her name again? Do you know, remember her? I cannot remember her name. Okay, something so like So y'all going to be mad at me because I, <laughs> I looked it up once and was like, do I really need to remember a storyline wife? Did you like this, uh, did you like this uh, situation? It was cool. Okay. But now we're seeing so much of how, okay, I'll Renee admit. Michelle. Sorry, Renee Michelle. Michelle yes. Yeah, Renee Michelle. Yeah. I will admit, the picture they took at Disneyland with him having the belt in front that of her was face stuff. was hilarious. Yeah, yep. But the whole, you know, the whole 24-7 thing, it, it's a good comedic bit, and I give credit to Drake Maverick and R-Truth, yes. as well as Carmella and Renee Michelle. Oh, absolutely. It's just the whole using, the, using relationships again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we did everything. Now, what happens? We go to Extreme Rules. Yep. Are they going to run through extreme rules all day with tables, ladders, chairs, all this stuff? Well, we certainly set up now that with Carmella and Truth, now Drake has Renee He's, Michelle because yeah. Renee Michelle is an actual She's wrestler. She's an actual wrestler. Right. Uh, I didn't think she was that good in these vignettes acting-wise. I was like, ooh, a little bit, ooh, like... You don't have enough, you don't have a lot of experience being like doing these mm. kinds of things necessarily on a consistent basis. Drake was certainly carrying that scene, um, but in, in the end, I, I think it's a good thing to have or be a part of it because of how they use those videos when they were on the honeymoon yeah. supposedly and at Disneyland and all that kind of stuff. I also think sometimes you know some of these things are overproduced. Some of these things in the back are overproduced. So what could yeah. should be just a say these lines, say them how you say along these lines, yeah, say them naturally. And then go for it. Right. A lot of times what we see, what we think is live is not live. They're already shot. Oh, right. Good point. You know, so a lot of these are, all right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. It's <laughs> the best we got. This is the best we got. We, and we keep going. So sometimes, you know, what you think should be having emotion and some real feeling yeah. just comes off flat. So that may be on Renee Michelle. That mm -hmm. may not. We just, a good point. We don't could know. Could be overproduced. That's certainly a point. Uh, but I, it did. It, I like that he's doing his thing. I just want to see a little more oh, yeah. from Renee and uh, a little more active involvement. Because one minute she's upset, she's pissed, she's hurt, and the next she's running away with Drake screaming. So like, I, I want to see her be a little more of an active part of it. If you're going to put her in it, oh, let yeah. her be more yeah, of an I agree. active part. I agree. 
All right, Shane and McIntyre continue jo- the joke that they started earlier about trying to find a, uh, a, a, a tag team partner for Roman Reigns because they're going to face him later on in the night in the uh, main event. Um, they ask some guy who picks up trash all the time. They ask some vendor uh, about it, and uh, eventually they'll get to somebody else who they offer a little bit of cash to be the tag team match. That runs through the rest of the show. All right, Ray Mysterio challenges. He comes out and challenges anyone in the back to a match. Ray coming back from injury. You know, he'd been out for a little bit, laid the uh, you know, uh, U.S. title at uh, on the ground there. I thought for he laid the universal title was I sleep somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. where Ray Mysterio's the, universal yeah, champion. The U.S. title. But then who comes out the challenge? And Bobby Lashley. Damn right. And Bobby Shouts, Lashley absolutely destroys him. Shouts out to Bobby Lashley being pissed off in promo in real life promos too. Yeah. Bobby, I, and you know what I enjoy? Booyaka. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I enjoyed about that? Granted, Bobby Lashley was supposed to squash Ray Mysterio because sure. you can't have him go through that hell with Braun Strowman setting up a last man standing and him lose. Yep. I was I was glad they did not when he was looking like he was about to throw him through the ramp through the screen. I'm so glad Strowman didn't come out. Yeah. Because in my head I was like, here comes the music, and I'm so glad they didn't because this way you keep playing the Strowman is hurt but not hurt. Right. You know, ready for that. It was a great way, but at the same time, like, damn Ray, did you have to be the dude to catch that from Bobby Lashley? Like, there's a bunch of other people you could have gave. Yeah. To la- you could have fed it's, to it's Lashley. It's such a weird way for him to come back to be getting beat up by Lashley to get like squashed. this. You could have yeah. fed a million other guys that you were going to have running backstage for the yeah. 24-7 title. You could have fed one of them to Bobby Lashley with no problem. Mm-hmm. You let Give Ray a chance to have a match. The only thing I'm thinking about is that they're doing this thinking down the road. In that down the road, once Lashley is done with Strowman, maybe he wants to get the U.S. title back and wants to fight Ray down the road after Ray defeats Joe or something like that. All kinds of possibilities there and be like, oh, you destroyed me. That's stuck with me for months and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Maybe. I mean, I mean be- we did all that. We've done the, we always do the Ray, which is the David Goliath match. Oh, of course. No matter, no matter what Ray does, it's pretty yeah. much David Goliath. Let us get a chance where we don't do the big, big Goliath, Goliaths, excuse me. Right. We get a chance to have him work. I mean, he works with some of the big guys. There's a again. There's a bunch of guys on that roster. Yeah, you can get. And since we're doing the wild card rule, <laughs> there's a bunch of guys you can give him to work. Oh sure. And build him back up. I just didn't. This is me personally. I just don't think you build this back up. We got Ray coming back after injury. He gives this impassioned promo, and he gets squashed. Yep, absolutely squashed. Yeah, it's a weird decision, booking wise. But you know, raising that uh, veteran place where he's putting other people over—that's his job. Yeah, so but do, maybe does, Ray, but does way. Ray Mysterio need to right. put over Bobby Lashley? Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. <laughs> it's it's a valid argument and point. Um, it it blew my mind last night as I was watching it. I was like, oh man, because uh, I'd seen the posts. Like today is the 23 year anniversary of the NWO, the creation of the NWO. Right, Hogan tweeted mm-hmm. about it. Kevin Ash tweeted, or I mean, Instagrammed about it. But I remember one of the iconic images or moments I have from the NWO is Ray Mysterio getting yes, thrown like a lawn like dart, like a lawn dart by <laughs> Kevin Ash, literally horizontal into that side trailer or whatever that yep. was, and then right down. And he wasn't like thrown from the waist; he was thrown from the top, like a lawn. Dart. Yeah, I was really like those. Those are those moments that you know I missed the NWO so much. Quick question then for you. Okay. Are you and do you is it NWO or DX for you? Who DX? And I'll tell you why. DX. Okay. Here, here's why. This is right. the only reason why as a whole. Who was the best at their prime? DX at the top. DX was better than the NWO. Or do you think overall DX beats NWO? Uh, it's hard. Here's people the still on. wearing NWO shirts. People still no, wearing it. I will, and people always will make inter- iterations of the NWO shirts. My only problem. New became, moral order. Yeah, yeah. My only problem became when we started getting NWO Wolfpack, NWO Black and White, uh, the LWO, the of BW, course. all these different offshoots yeah. that started just diluting what the NWO was. Right, right, right. DX never did that. That was the only thing for me. DX, yeah, true. DX was always, you were D-Generation X or you weren't. Yeah. People who weren't part of the group got treated out and played bogusly. Please look up the Booker T super kick from Shawn Michaels. That was, <laughs> I still to say to this day, was the most racist super kick in history. Because he was like, something doesn't belong here. You and his super kick yeah. Booker. But when you if you look at the beginning stages though when they first came out with the nwo yeah. it was amazing it was surreal to watch hogan finally be the heel that he has always been for years i wish people would pay attention to that hogan has always been a heel what are you talking about 
Hogan has always been a heel. He backstabbed Macho Man Randy Savage to take Miss Elizabeth. What? He took Elizabeth. Hogan has How always done. Dare Hogan you. has always talked dirty. Hogan has always. But we were so busy getting caught up on the take your prayers, take your take your vitamins, yeah. say your prayers, and yeah. all this to train. Hogan has always been a heel. How dare you? Hogan has always been a heel. He is a hero to millions. He can be. Well, he just was. Like, you remember that video about the Karate Kid where Daniel Larusso is actually the villain? <laughs> it's the same thing with Hulk Hogan. But Hogan didn't do anything with Elizabeth. That was all in Macho's jealous eyes. R.I.P. Macho and R.I.P. Elizabeth. He took sadly. Elizabeth from the Macho Man. He took her. Well, he tried to make sure she was all right. Yeah, I call it what you want. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but that was a whole trope right in the 80s and 90s. Everyone turned on Hogan. Everyone. Tugboat turned on Hogan. Well, would, would, would. <laughs> I mean, Bill Billy Jim. I think Billy Jim is the only one that ever really turned And Hill Billy Jim is still telling us about it at his Hall of Fame speech what? while telling us how rich he is. <laughs> well, I yeah, know. Hill Billy took it. I, sometimes I'll listen to him on Sirius XM. He has a country show. Yeah, of course he does. XM. He's fantastic. But no, I mean, I, I, I will always go NWO, but I think overall DX just lasted longer and was better than NWO. But at the NWO at its peak, oh, at its peak I think yeah. it defeats DX I'll at give, its peak. I'll give you, I'll, I'll rescind my statement. Yeah, I'll give you that. But yeah. as a whole, because yeah. again, we had those different iterations I of the I think you NWO. make a great point. No other person was part of DX but the original members. And China, it, uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Road Dogg, and uh, a badass Billy Gunn. And X-Pac. And X-Pac, right. Those no who, no one else got to be part of it by putting shirts on or anything like that. When they, again, they really, tried to do D-Generation X, and again... Booker T's jaw paid the price. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. But I'm not going to bash the LWO. I still have a T-shirt for that. The Latino world. I remember, but that's what I'm saying. We did the Latino, the One Warrior Nation. That was ridiculous. <laughs> VWO was the worst. Blue, the, the Blue, Blue world, world Order was the was the Blue Meanie Stevie Blue Meanie. Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Man, don't get me started. Uh, well, speaking of factions, AJ and the club are shown next walking around. This is the new crew. They can't call them the Bullet Club or the Ballot Club, so they're just going to call them the club, uh, and that's who they are. Uh, we see them walking in the back. We'll see them a little bit later. Cesaro takes on No Way Jose for some reason. Who was clamoring for this match that got interrupted by the 24-7 uh, situation last week? Who was clamoring for this match again? Cesaro got the victory again, and then we go backstage. Oh, Nick, do you want to say anything about this? Yes, oh, I okay, do. Okay, fine, feel. I feel so sorry for Cesaro. I know, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I feel so they take uh, They take Sheamus away from him, and they don't well, know Sheamus where to put him. Well, Sheamus is hurt. Him. Okay, They fine. didn't take him away. But Sheamus, they don't know where to put him. Sheamus was right, rehabbing an injury, but it was like, we have to put him somewhere... The man was at one point having a decent singles run yeah, and push was. before the bar. Remember this, even yeah. when him and Sheamus were going head to head. And then the bar has been, was one of the great things. Sheamus is rehabbing an injury. Yeah. And now you got to figure out what to do with Cesaro. And you throw him with No Way Josue, who is the hybrid combination of Adam Rose and Carlito True. that no one wants to see. Nope. And you give another match, just, to, I mean, yeah, get a TV paycheck. Yeah. It's fine. Get a TV check. I guess. But guys like that want to work. Yeah. Guys like that can work. Cesaro can certainly work. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not Why didn't he him. fight uh, Ray? I would have loved to see that him and Ray. That would have been a good fight. Because they had a match before. Yeah. I would have. I have no problems. You, there are certain matches we keep saying. Let Jose take myself. on Lashley. That's a, that's a squash right Thank there. Thank you. Let, Let Bobby Lashley beat the hell out of No Way Jose yeah. and the entire conga line. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The That's entire possible. conga line. Certainly possible. I mean, those are things that would only make sense. Yeah. But no one is... I'd rather see No Way Jose and the conga line running for the 24-7 title. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If that case. Yeah. If you're not going to have them do that, but... I don't I disagree digress. with you. I don't disagree with you. Uh, well, we see our truth and Carmella in the back looking for Drake, looking into different places. They have a back and forth. And then eventually she jumps on his back and they run out. Uh, the opposite. In the opposite direction, right. Lay, lay, lay in the groundwork there that they're looking for Drake. But yes, and he makes some kind of funny comments back and forth and then she jumps on his back. I wonder, and is he taking care of her? Is he feeding oh, her? Maybe. He was talking, about, he was talking yeah. about Drake with the belt and I'm like, he is Archer, hilarious. He's hilarious. He is making the best out of this. Oh, yeah. He is making the best out of this program. And Carmella is benefiting from it as oh, well. Carmella's great with this program. She's good. You know, she gets her matches yep. every now and then. But she's both of them are benefiting for this so much. And I don't I don't know anybody else that was underutilized that would have taken this ball and ran with it. That's like a very here. good point. You know, you, you, Carmella is a two-time champion, I think mm -hmm. two-time women's champion. You go to her and you go, hey, this is an angle we're looking at. 
do you want to play this angle with this guy who hasn't been around for a while and we're bringing back just to see what he can do with his time? A guy in his, what, what is it, R-Truth? Like late 40s, early 50s? Late 40s, early 50s. Yeah. Black don't crack, Black baby. don't crack. He looks the same. God, I was watching some old match room from the 90s on WCW and I was like, holy Mary, mother of God, you look yep. the same. Yeah. Same sheen, the same muscles. I was just like shocked. Only thing now was some blonde dreads. <laughs> yeah, true. Got the dreads. <laughs> but his, his timing, the comedic timing is just brilliant right it's beautiful it so, so works so well i think this is the hidden truth about uh, a lot of the black wrestlers in the history of the wwe they carry a lot of great comedy with mm -hmm. what they do the rock uh new day uh um certainly uh, uh booker t yeah and now you is uh, now you have our truth like a lot of black wrestlers are really good at the comic comedic situations they put them in do they put them in uncomfortable situations at times Absolutely, but they're very funny, and you don't find that too often with a lot of the. You know, uh, what's up bringing them to this right now? And I hate that I'm saying this. Montez Ford and the Street Profits. Oh yeah, I don't know the other brother's name. Please forgive me. I know y'all like how you. Montez Ford is clearly a future WWE champion. Yes, yes. He is clearly a future WWE champion. Yeah, everyone says that because his his energy during those promos, everything he does just just exudes off the screen and it comes through yep. the camera. Yep. Even when he hit the person, he was like, transition, transition. Yeah. And I was, it was so beautiful. And yeah, they do. You have the black wrestlers who have been put in these uncomfortable situations, but those who are given a chance to do what they do and make it happen, it has always been a positive outcome. Comedic timing has been something that we just have. And especially, now yeah. don't get me wrong, everybody does not have it. Right. Don't get me wrong, you couldn't put Ahmed Johnson in a funny situation. Yeah, very true. Expected that. The boogeyman worked for a very long time, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Never forget that. The Godfather. The Godfather he was great. Granted, we can't, we can't call it the hoe train. We can call it the sexually liberated women Transportation sure, system now. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> That's all you, man. I'm not touching I'm just that. saying, they could not do the whole train. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. Do you understand? Some I music had two story. friends who were part of that when they came to Tallahassee. Yeah. 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 You just can't say, let's get on the whole train. Everybody's yeah. going to be like, let me tweet this out. <laughs> but the, like you said, the comedic elements and yeah. things that they need to do. And our truth has been a prime example of that. You give him something and let him have the freedom with it. Right. He runs with it. Because that's not WWE produced. That's not all Vince in the back. Yeah, Even though him and Vince are like this. They are. But that's not him and all Vince. That's Vince saying, I trust you to do this. Yeah, and you talk about Street Profits. We saw them in the back just having a quick little uh, few seconds of a thing back and forth, doing a little, little uh, uh, jam there between them. But... Um, that's just the lay in the groundwork that they're still around there and getting that, getting everybody, uh, getting their appetites wet to see them finally fight. Well, they are the, the NXT tag team champs. You got to remember when right. they became NXT champs, some people were like, oh, they finally got it. But you had to get people to know who they are. Yep. Everybody else has had the NXT tag titles. We've heard about them. You know, we've talked about Undisputed Era had them. Everybody was yeah. always talking about them, you know, and, uh, I forgot who else, had, many other people, even war, the war, war Raiders, war machine, whatever we're going to call them this week, had them, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so you got to get people to know about the Street Profits. Yep. And now you got people watching them. And uh, make sure y'all follow my big bro, Shad Gaspard, on Instagram. He had a message for the Street Profits, the Usos, and about 90 other tag teams. Oh, my. I'll show you post <laughs> when we get off air. Okay. Uh, all right. So next week, speaking of the Viking Raiders, the War Machine, whatever, they're in a squash match here. I don't know what. I really just hate squash matches. Ryan and I had a big old fight about it on the show a few weeks ago, or debate, rather, on the show a few weeks ago. He, he's a fan of squash matches. You need I, them. I absolutely hate them. You need them. I, I, okay, when you're coming up, sure, but not on the top of the show. No, no, I don't here's think the you problem. Need them in what do you if you don't Smackdown. have if you don't have squash matches for the for the Viking Raiders right now? Yeah. What do you do with them? Put them up against tag teams. They did it last week. What other tag New team? New Day. They put them up against New Day last yeah, week. Yeah, but that's only because they're a team from SmackDown that are eventually, they're eventually going for the yeah, SmackDown yeah, titles. I know. What do you do with them? Because you look at the Viking Raiders, the first thing you say is they should be number one contenders. Mm -hmm. If you jump them in that spot that quick, and then you I'm just sure the Ascension aren't doing anything. Yeah, this is true. Because Connor and Victor <laughs> still saying, have jobs. I'm saying they're, they're getting <laughs> but they a still would have to have a squash match with them. They still that's would. fine. As long as it's talent, that's all I care about. Nobody's. I don't want. First of to all, see I that. do, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because those are the guys who end up getting jobs later. Sometimes you can be pissed about that. Sometimes but the they guys who take take an ass whooping. Guess what? Those are the ones who take that ass whooping now have a WWE credit, no matter what you true, say, true. and can travel the Indies and make more money until the fact they build up their craft, they hone up their skills, and hone up their name. Yeah. To now, the WWE brings them back in. Yeah, that's, that was Ryan's argument as well. Some of these people do become 
some stars down the road. AJ Styles used to get whooped. Yeah, yeah, but you know. <laughs> And when he was, I didn't want him in those matches. All right, the 24-7 fight, as I said, breaks out at the end of that squash match with Viking Raiders. Uh, they're chasing all around the ring, and, and again, our truth r runs out with Carmella on his back. Uh, we, we'll Can yeah. we talk about how the Viking Raiders were not going? Yeah, they, they were. They, they were beating dull piss out of everybody. Yeah, they were mad. And then we, our truth went in the ring. Everybody was like, oh, Jesus, no. Our truth rolled in the ring, and it rolled back. back. <laughs> no, no, I'm not having any of this. That was really funny. That was a good one. That. It was good. Uh, all right, the Roman Reigns is being asked by Charlie in the back. Oh, Charlie. About who his partner is going to be. He doesn't. Is that a bad thing? Like I, no, I love Charlie. Pieces. I, yeah. She's big gorgeous. Charlie was like, Charlie's amazing. She's a good follow on Instagram, too. She's very positive. I, I appreciate I'm that. I'm going to start following Charlie Caruso. You should. Charlie Caruso is great. He, he doesn't reveal who his partner is, but he says, you all know who he is. You all know who he is. Um, and then, for some reason, we go to the Canellis back then, Maria. And, man... This started last week. Jay, it didn't get better this week. It sure did. This is horrible. It sure did. Look, I don't want to be mean to Maria or Mike. And look, they're cashing paychecks on the WWE. They deserve Just to make a living. Just resigned a new deal, too. Just resigned a new deal. Uh, they, and apparently, she's really good friends with Paul. That's the rumor behind the scenes. Um, but this is horrible, man. Uh, to have Mike Canellas play a cuckold type role because they said this is like a punishment level for him. Yeah, because apparently he said some stuff on a podcast or something. And yeah, so this is his punishment. It's, again, it's one of those things where it's embarrassment, but also some people yeah. say, well, you're on TV because we can go back to the revival a couple of a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way the Usos were embarrassing them. And they were on TV, and now they're the Raw Tag Champs. Yeah. They're, they're in a big profile match. I don't know what this will lead to with Mike Kanellis because we're doing this through two shows. Yep. He does it through Raw and through 205 Live. Uh, Mike is a good, is a great worker. Yeah. A great worker. It's just so, it's that TV show. Mm -hmm. We need to fill in, again, we got to go, if you go back to the Raw into the 90s, yeah. we had these. So, and, and that's the thing that a lot of us who are fans and workers and people and pundits and stuff have to remember some of the stuff we see now that we were like, why are we doing this? Yeah. In the 90s, it was why we loved it. Of course, of course. Yeah, but we move on. You know, that's yeah, how it works. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But sometimes I don't want to see a Van I don't want to see a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie the way I did back in the in the early 90s. I don't know if I want to see a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie now. No. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to see it now. Oh, but but back then I but did. But the difference but the thing is. Or a Steven Seagal movie. For, it's a better you example. You mean Fat Bloated Elvis? Oh. Um the thing is, you have some of these angles that worked. Yeah. Again, you and you always rehash everything, no matter what. There has not been a storyline or pretty much a gimmick for even some sense that hasn't been redone. Sure, sure. Absolutely. You know, you'll have the, the love affairs. Remember, Edge and Lita, yeah. Macho Man Elizabeth, Becky and Seth, all these consistently get done. You have your tag team squabbles. You have your obscure type of struggles mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, but again, to see this is cringeworthy to, to say, but it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm just like, like you say, cringeworthy is all I think when I'm watching this. <laughs> like, woof. Um, that's not overproduced. That's just bad. Um, all right, Ricochet is out next, comes out to face Gallows. We mentioned the club earlier. They would get involved here. Certainly here, this is the situation. They actually gave Ricochet a microphone. He tries to do a little bit of a promo. It's okay. It's not great. He's really not good on the mic. Not bad, but he's not good on the mic. Uh, and then they come out. Gallows had a, uh, has a good uh, match with him. Uh, uh, Ricochet gets the victory, but AJ says, hey, you talked about how you wanted to go through everybody to go through everybody. And like Jay said, they found a way to make a two out of three false <laughs> match just with a different person here. Yep. Uh, and then Anderson rolls in. They have a great, this was actually, I think the Anderson Ricochet pairing was more interesting than the Gallows Anderson pairing in terms of the moves and the rhythm of the match. Yeah. Because I enjoyed more. Ricochet gets the victory and then AJ just barnstorms him and just completely destroys him. Uh, they uh, kick the crap out of him, all three of them, leave him in the ring. AJ walking away says uh you know i'm gonna leave you just stay down i'm gonna leave a little bit left of you for our match this weekend unfortunately ricochet doesn't listen because the hero never listens gets back up and they come back in and do the flying forearm off the top rope to finish him off and walk away uh thoughts on this entire situation it's building ricochet up which is great absolutely it's building him up it's great Gallows and Anderson just re-signed five-year deals, so mm -hmm. they're they're part of some big, which AJ was instrumental in that. Yep. So look, put the club together. AJ has fun. AJ has more fun as a heel. Mm -hmm. AJ has more fun as a heel. Who does? 
Ricochet is great in the ring. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing that can go wrong with this besides Ricochet sometimes on the mic, but everybody isn't a good promo person. Right. So I'm, I, I could give that a pass. I give that a pass. This is great. I just see it as, I think Ricochet beats the odds at Extreme Rules because I think it's too early to just give him the belt then have him lose it. Right, right. I think you do this program with him in the club for a minute. You do this, he beats AJ, they jump him. Mo next Monday, we have some type of six man. <coughs> Ricochet gets two partners or whatever. Because at some point, he can't just keep trying to be, I can keep beating you all myself. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that, I think it just keeps building for a little bit. Then eventually, we give AJ the title, possibly SummerSlam, boom. Yeah. I think this is interesting, too, because one, um, if you put the club back together, the biggest mistake is to have them two of them lose again Right off the back, the whole point of them coming back together was to build them back up. Uh, so to have them lose to Ricochet back to back, uh, and well, the way they I thought lost, that was a mistake. I think the way they lost helps. Okay, and I, I, I will say that the way they lost with the sneaky roll up uh -huh. from Ricochet to Gallows, the first one, yeah, that helps. The way he beat Anderson, it helps. Okay. It'd be one of those different things if all of a sudden it was just a four fifty out of nowhere, you know, setting right. up full matches and then boom, then you'd be like, oh well. Now he's just superhuman beating everybody. Right. Which, right. by the way, I have an issue with Rene Russo. It was like, oh, here's our resident superhero. I was like, I swear to God, you call somebody supervillain. We fighting. <laughs> but Rene, Rene, Rene Young, excuse me, bust at Russo. Yeah. But it's, I get what you're saying. You're supposed to keep the club dominant. Yeah. But I don't think the club is meant to be this run through everybody faction right not now. Not meant to be the NWO. Yeah, they're not meant to be that. Okay. They're meant to be this, we kick ass, take names. Right. That's who they are. Right. It, there are the run through people factions, but then there's the, we kick ass people. Yeah. Okay. I just, I, I thought it kind of took away a little bit of their shine from last week. I hear your point of view though. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how they go forward with this. I mean, this. absolutely. I like that it's happening. I just want to see it be more brutal, more ruthless, more vicious in the NWO style, the DX style. I want to see that. That'll Even start, the Four Horsemen That'll style. happen after October once we start getting that third hour raw that yep. changes. That changes the rating? That changes right. the rating, right. yeah. I just want to see someone's arm in a trunk getting broken a la Dusty Rhodes or the leg getting broken out in the parking I lot. I want to see another neck in a steel chair and be like, please God, don't do it. Oh yeah, that too. Or the rock in the ambulance in the end. That was with NWO, that was fantastic. Or you could always do the greatest thing they had done that was was like attitude esque. Yeah. Braun Strowman oh. whooping the piss out of Roman Reigns, going, "I'm not finished with you yet." Yeah, yeah. Even on the stretcher and everything. That was great. Give me more of those. Yeah, yeah. Those, <laughs> those are I think are coming. All right, Drake is celebrating surviving the night as 24 seven champion with his wife, with Renee again. When r Truth pops up out of one of those blue massive carrying cases with Carmella, they chase uh, them out uh, to try to go and get the title uh, and then this runoff that's pretty much it that ends their situation uh and uh, but i think it was really funny at the end having a referee jump on our truth's back rather this than time, carmella yeah. as they run off because he really wants to get that title all right let's move on to bailey taking on sarah logan here in a beat the clock matchup this was really boring kind of flaccid i get that we're supposed to push nikki and try to get nikki over because bailey's already over alexa's already over I get it, but this is more a continuation of a program that I don't 100% like. Uh, it takes uh, Bailey some time to beat Sarah Logan. Um, Nikki doesn't even like it. Doesn't even come close. Nikki beats it by a minute and 50 seconds or mm -hmm. something when she defeats Sarah Brooke uh, or Dana Brooke rather. And both of us knew they were both going to lose. It was a matter of time. Yeah. And I don't know why you bring Sarah Logan out this because basically you're saying Sarah Logan is at Dana Brooke's level. Who do and, you? Well, who? But who do you have? Who do you legitimately have to feed to Bailey? And I hate to use Alicia it that way. Alicia Fox is always good for doing those kinds of things. Alicia's always she's this a, is true. She's a company warrior. She's this a, is true. She's this a very company true. person. She will do those things and put people over. She has no problem doing well, it. We and got, she gives entertaining matches. Well, we got to do something with the former members of the Riot Squad since they broke them up. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But this making them making her get knocked taken out in four minutes yeah. it doesn't help push her forward. I think it's a bit of a mistake. Uh, and I don't know what's going on with Liv. We haven't seen much of Liv other than on her social media. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, in the end, she gets the victory. Nikki does ahead of uh, Bailey's time. So she gets to do the stipulation. The stipulation is that it's a two on one match. Now, her and Alexa taking on Bailey for the title. This is weird. Who gets the belt? Whoever pins? Nikki's going to pin her. You think Nikki's, Nikki's going to pin? Yeah. You think Nikki's going to pin Bailey? It's a two on one handicap match okay. for the SmackDown Women's title. If they win, the two win, Alexa's supposed to be the champion. Right. Nikki's going to pin Bailey. Mm hmm. I guarantee you. And then Nikki's, Nikki's going to raise the belt. Alexa's going to snatch the belt from her. Oh, okay. 
And then we do this whole, we finally will sell, sow those seeds that's in the, the deception between the two, dissension, uh-huh. excuse me, between the two, giving us the match with them two at SummerSlam. Yeah, I think that's possible. My option is what I brought up the meeting is that this is where Sasha comes back. Sasha comes to help Bailey out, interfere in the match, take out Alexa or take out Nikki, and Bailey gets the victory thanks to the help from Sasha. Yeah, but then what happens? I mean, then, then there's just, a tag team match at SummerSlam. I still, but then you still, okay, you get a tag team match at SummerSlam. Yeah, because I don't want the du- belt taken off Bailey, man. She needs the belt for a while. She need, Yeah, she needs she, the belt. She's but getting a great shot. She also me. needs a new character. I still am saying well, that. Well, she's, she's a no. little more vicious than she was no. before. Okay. <laughs> Get rid of the flailing tube arm, buddy. The Bailey that buddy. I agree with. The Bailey buddies got to go. The Bailey buddies have got to go. They've got to go. I the I'm agree a with hugger that. thing got to go. Mm-hmm. It is time to evolve. The hug life? Yeah. The hug life has got to go. You aren't the, look, everybody said it. You aren't the girl who dreamed anymore. Yeah, right. You've accomplished that dream a couple of times. Right, right, right. You got to You have to evolve. I get the tag match, but then it's like, okay, do we have the Boston Hut connection saying they're going to go back for the tag team titles? Possibly. But we still got to get this Alexa-Nikki feud happening. Yep. So, if yeah, if you do SummerSlam, then the reason they lose is Nikki, then Alexa's mad, Nikki's trying to, you know, console her, Alexa slaps her, boom, then we have that happen. Yeah. I can see that. I, I mean, it can go different ways. If Sasha comes back during this match, it doesn't become an extreme rules match anymore. No, the extreme, the extreme becomes because the extreme is two on one. Right, say. right. But if they, if, 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 um, oh, you said the, the tag match is SummerSlam, excuse me. Right, right. But if they turn this match as two on one handicap match, isn't a handicap match like no DQ or is it? It depends. Yeah. They can they do turn, no DQ. If they turn into no DQ, Sasha coming back. Okay. That's what I think. I think she's going to she come back and do the whole intro while Bailey get the ass whooped, which is going to be hilarious. <laughs> it's boss time. She's going to swerve and everything. Had a drink you know, <laughs> and made it. Just going to come down the ring while Bailey's still getting whooped. I'm Quietly, gonna... one of my favorite theme songs. Yo, play it in your, if you got headphones with good bass, yeah. play Sasha Banks' theme song. Yes, it is in Jay's workout playlist. <laughs> yeah, can't lie about that. Uh, eventually, Bailey, uh, Nikki is going back and forth with Bailey, or has these insults or whatever. Bailey knocks her her out. Bailey just get, knocks her out and then does the elbow drop just to finish the deal. This is a little heel move. This is what I think. Her character is changing. She's getting a harder edge, but I think, Jay, you're also right. You got to get rid of these buddies and all this kind of stuff. If you want to make her go harder edge, more tougher edge, let her do that. She doesn't need all that other crap. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't. Let's move on from that stuff mm-hmm. so that she can like now be t- like Cena eventually moved on from all that, from all that stuff. You got to move on from all this stuff. Be a little harder edge to you um hogan even did when he and they and they're came se- they've been setting the seeds yes bailey she doesn't want to talk to fans she's been acting this way remember they were doing the whole oh, thing oh yeah right, we've right. been setting and planting all these seeds for this to happen let's make it happen yeah 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 and then that's because because that becomes a good bigger question oh my too. god what if alexa and bailey turn on nikki then god is good <laughs> <laughs> that would be a swerve and a half. That would be a swerve no one Woo! ever saw coming. And but then because I was gonna bring that up, like, well, if before that, yeah. what if Sasha comes back and Bailey is this darker person now, but Sasha still like yeah. you can't like she needs to evolve as well. Right, right. So that's a lot of a lot, a lot in play, that's for sure. Wrestlers we'll see need what to happens. start getting different musics. They need to start doing that again okay. more frequently. Well, I don't disagree with you there. Uh, all right, to end the night, we have the tag team matches, the main event match, Roman Reigns and I'm sorry, Roman Reigns and a partner of Gary the Go Gulak, but go back a gulag, something yeah, like that. Sure, something like that. Uh facing Drew McIntyre and Shane McMahon in this match. Uh Reigns gets real early in the match. Reigns is kind of pushed outside or whatever and knocked outside. And then Gary, everyone thinks he's going to get destroyed here. And then Gary uh, does a, some incredible moves. Gary's a good dang on cruiserweight. <laughs> <laughs> Although he blew the first uh, top of the ring spot. He slipped off the ropes and fell into Shane rather than jumping into Shane. But, but I think but that made works. Up for it later. But they may have actually set it up that Oh, way. yeah, to, to make it think that he was To wasn't, make it see he yeah. couldn't do anything. Maybe, maybe. But eventually they did. McIntyre comes in, dr- delivers the uh, Claymore kick. Ends the situation, and we find out that it was actually Cedric Alexander the whole time. And, and Cedric actually bloodied his mouth up. You can see the blood in his mouth. When he wouldn't, you, wouldn't you like to say congratulations to Cedric? You finally got on TV after all those vignettes they'd been yeah. doing. 
The only time we really saw him on TV was with the 24-7 run. That's true. That's true. And then, he, yeah, he is a former 24-7 champion. But they remember they did this whole big vignette push after oh, the yeah. shakeup that he was coming to Raw. Yeah. He was coming to Raw, and he had never shown up. And then he showed up in the 24-7. Now you have him do this, which it kind of still diminishes him because you had to put him under a mask the whole time. Yeah. Let Cedric Alexander work. Yeah, I agree. Cedric is so good. Okay, find something. Something can happen. Him and Cesaro would have been a fantastic match instead of No Way Jose as well. And look, there's a million. I'm just saying that <laughs> would have been a good one. three is in the back, ladies oh, and gentlemen. That's when family does <laughs> mess you up, man. Uh, poor, uh, poor EC3. Dixie, that Dixie Carter stench. Uh, Vince is like, you go ahead. You just, you, you. Um, we got you. You're, you're signed. Don't worry. The, the check's going to be signed. Don't your checks sweat. are clear. Don't worry. You just good. sit there with that Keep red working cup. out. Your check's going to clear. <laughs> Keep working out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is just, you know, furthers the situation. It was weird, though, when they offered that dude $5,000. Well, I'll do anything for $5,000. Um, that was a little uncomfortable, that scene. I didn't like that scene. But then it, the way it plays out for Cedric coming in, I thought it was cool. But like Jay said, Cedric deserves more than this. Cedric is a cruiserweight champion, 205 champion. Cruiserweight champion deserves more than this. Because what's going to happen after this? Nothing. Yeah, right. Exactly. Where does he uh, fit? I mean, the, the reason you were brought in was for a program to help set up a program for a match that happens on Sunday. Yeah. Now it's the Undertaker and Roman. Right. Thank God. Which it, they immediately put up after that match was of over. Of course they did. Yeah. And so what do you have Monday? You have somebody arguing one way or another. Does Cedric the I Cedric, I was say Cedric the Entertainer, excuse me, Lord. <laughs> Does Cedric Alexander have to go up against Drew McIntyre one on one now on yeah. Monday? That's a good question. Because that's potentially what that may happen, may not. We don't know. Yeah, we know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, certainly this was an interesting send-off show. I think it still picked up uh from what happened last week. I I, I thought it was a good show. Not great. But I thought last week was a little bit better. So at least there's main, they're maintaining some level of consistency here yeah, over agree. the last two weeks. I agree with that. I, I agree. I don't know how much influence Heyman has. You say hardly any, but I think it feels like he has a little more influence or some changes are happening here that are better. I, I've, I've read that Vince is actually open to understanding that changes have to happen. Oh, that's good. And, I, I yeah, there, I don't think he has the full influence. This is a better show, but that's because we had such an amazing show last week. Yeah, very so true. So now following the heels of that, it's like, boom. So now the pay-per-view happens Sunday. Yeah. That's going to be a big telling thing, how people feel about this pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Bray Wyatt is supposed to come back finally, I think. Yeah. I'm not, I wonder if Bray Wyatt or The Fiend are showing up. Yeah. Because I don't want Mr. Rogers Wyatt showing up. I, need I think The, the Fiend's going to show up. The Fiend up. has to show up. Yeah. But where does The Fiend show up? Well, a lot of people think that was uh, the Fiend knocking on the door for Alistair Black when the door opened. Yeah, well, they said original plans were supposed to be Cesaro for that. Ooh, so if Cesaro it's, against. But the problem is, if you put the Fiend against Alistair mm. Black, you're not. I don't want that because not Alistair yet. Black is pumped up to be going over. You're yeah, making yeah, him yeah, his yeah. dude. True. I don't. You don't need to bring Bray Wyatt back after this whole big thing you're doing. Not like Ray, just one yeah. promo. This whole big thing you've done with Bray Wyatt to have him come back as his alter ego mm -hmm. to drop to Alistair Black that quick yeah out the gate yeah 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 just certain things that don't it's a very good point man we'll see how both of those both of those guys have, have had long programs now concurrently to get them back to get them over rather with the fans uh bray being reborn in essence uh and alistair being separated from ricochet in that tag team match now coming in with some pedigree built up with sitting in that room what are you going to do with both of them we're going to find out yeah we'll see and we have to find out soon because these yeah. promo, I'm done with them. I'm done with the fun house. I'm done with the Well, you notice we didn't get a fun house. We weapon. didn't. I know. We're so not getting any more fun houses. Good, good. I'm done with it. But so, the dolls, I didn't see any more. I didn't see any they dolls. They didn't put the dolls around this time. Yeah, so. yeah. I didn't see the dolls this time, which I did last week, which was really funny. So, all right. Well, that's our Raw recap. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch or listen to us. We always appreciate that. I want to thank Jay Washington for stopping by. Thank you. Jay, where can we find you, brother? You find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. Jay Washington, M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington. My YouTube channel, youtube.com slash J A Y Washington. 8 0 and the Mad Titan podcast, where I get you caught up on everything that happens in the Marvel and DC live action cinematic universes. It's Barbershop Talk for Nerds, as well as the Wrestling Compadre Slam cast on Dragon Wagon Radio. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you, are you enjoying that time on the Wrestling Compadres? I am having a decent time. Oh, that. Ooh, nah. some heat, some heat. No, it's not heat. I have, I have fun right. with it. I All have right. fun. I have fun with the Compadres. It okay. is it's great to be able to talk with guys I, I know and guys I hadn't known and just getting all different perspectives and just having fun. Yeah. Like I have fun here, just having fun talking about the business. I'm waiting for my invite. We'll see maybe down the road. I, I, I have told John Roker. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear this. I said, if I invite you, 
You can't make it. You know why? Because you're in this office to damn near true. seven o'clock at night. It's true. It's true. Every day. It's, <laughs> it's not a lie. It's not a lie. Uh, well, uh, always uh, follow at the wrestling sheet. Follow Jay where he said you could follow him. Follow me at the Roka says. And don't forget for all the articles and the podcasts and the videos we do on the wrestling sheet, you can go to uh, www.prowrestlingsheet.com or go to the YouTube channel there and subscribe. Really appreciate all the subscriptions that have uh, that have happened over the last year. Uh, Ryan was very kind to give me a shout out on Twitter yesterday uh, about our working together. I've certainly enjoyed it. I can't believe a year has flown by. I just want a shout out. So fast. <laughs> I just want so a shout-out. You, you get enough <laughs> shout-outs. Uh, but, yeah, it was really nice to write. So, you know, uh, keep uh, watching and listening and reading everything the Pro Wrestling Sheet does. It's always uh, – I'm very honored to have been a part of helping it grow over this last year and getting to know Ryan Satin, a good dude. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. He'll be back tomorrow as well. Ryan will for the SmackDown Live recap. I'm John Roca. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. ProWrestlingSheet.com.